Hey y'all, so today we are jumping back into adaptive probe volume. So the previous video that I did was more about taking a very rudimentary scene with a hallway and just showing the difference between light probe groups and adaptive probe volumes. This video is really diving into the tool itself and showing how to integrate this into a scene that's already been built. Another core feature that I intend to show is blending between scenarios that you can bake out. So if we want a day and a light scenario, we'll talk through that. Uh, I have this up in the background to start just because it is so important to remember that we have a massive amount of documentation, especially on these newer tools like APVs. Um, so coming into here, if you want to click on Adaptive Probe Volumes, you can come down in here and see all of the different pieces of this. So bake multiple scenes together with baking sets, configure size and density of Adaptive Probe Volumes all the way up to intro to APVs and how to use them. So if I want to get into changing lighting at runtime, we can start getting into all of this different stuff. We won't spend time on this or me reading it aloud. Just realize that it's out there and I'll put the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and dive in. What I'm going to do is create a Unity 6. Uh, I'm using 6000.0.20F1 and I'm going to do the universal 3D sample uh, because I love using this garden scene as something that's really interesting to light. So I'm gonna go ahead and do project name as APV Demo V1, and we're good to go. I'll go ahead and create the project and see you as soon as it has loaded. All right, so our project is just loaded. This is our Unity 6 sample scene in URP. I'm going to go ahead and close out the tutorial panel. And I'll close out this tutorial window so we can maximize our screen space for looking at this stuff. Pull the project down. The scene that I want to spend the most time in, as I mentioned, is the garden. I just think it's a kick-ass scene. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And things are going to load in real quick. Great. Go into my scene view and... Let's see where we want to be. Nice. The scene always impresses me. Okay, so everything is loading in. Let me turn off the gizmos so we can ooh and ah for a moment. Damn, that's cool. So uh, a couple things I need to do is see what the render settings are, see what the lighting settings are, and let's start there. So I'm gonna go into our render settings by going into edit project settings graphics and look at my render pipe which currently has none attributed so i'm just going to put it into pc high i'm going to hit confirm and we're good to go there what i want to do next is to select this default render pipeline and in clicking it we can now come down to where it has light probe system and switch that to adaptive probe volumes I also am going to want to enable lighting scenarios so that I can blend between multiple scenarios. So here is lighting scenario, enable lighting scenario, and we are all good there. So I'm happy with how everything has been enabled here. I then want to come over into window, rendering, and lighting, and pull lighting up to the top right and take a look at a couple of these things. So uh, baked global illumination is good. I like to do baked and direct. Progressive GPU I'm happy with. I noticed there's uh, an issue here. I'm just going to fix that quickly. You may or may not see that on your end. And everything else looks fine for now. Let's go over to adaptive probe volumes. And we have single scene, probe placement, Lighting scenarios, which is only there because we activated it in PC High. If you had not activated it, this would not show up. As well as sky occlusion and probe invalidity settings. So I'm going to check on sky occlusion just because I think it's a, a neat feature that I would like to have enabled. I am going to have two scenarios, one being night, one being day. I do think this has a skybox in it. This is not like volumetric clouds or anything up above. Uh, so I may need to grab a day skybox to pull in here. Uh, but outside of that should be relatively straightforward. 
So neither of these is baked out. So what I want to do is generate lighting, but I currently do not have any adaptive probe volume in the scene. So if I go into my hierarchy here on the left and I go to light and do adaptive probe volume, uh, that will then let me go into the inspector and make sure that the mode is set to scene. So it's baking across the whole scene. And then I want to bake probe volumes. So let's go ahead and do that, and I'll see you as soon as it bakes. Okay, so the bake has just finished there, which didn't do a whole lot. It mentions here, hey, your adaptive probe volume has never been baked or has changed. You need to generate lighting from the lighting window. Um, so one thing here to call out is that as we get further into this, I have my rendering debugger pulled up down here. If you want to get into it, you'll go to Window Analysis rendering debugger, and then I've just dragged it down here. This is going to let us visualize things like the probes once they're deployed across the scene. Uh, one other thing that we want to do as we're setting up our scene is select everything with a mesh renderer. Uh, in looking at this scene, that would be an absolute nightmare, as you can see over here on the right, that I don't have a mesh renderer until I get to like the farthest subchildren of parent objects. So a really cool way to go about using the smart search feature up here, which is this top right button at the top right of the hierarchy, is I can come in here and go to hierarchy, components, come down here and go to mesh render, or I can just type it in the search up top. And now it's going to return a search of everything within the hierarchy that has a mesh render component. So now I can come over here and shift select everything. And I think what I want to do is just make sure that I'm selecting root, that I can now get over here into the mesh render. So I hit enter just to force that selection. And over here I can change everything to contribute global illumination and receive GI from light probes. I also want everything to be set to static for now. And we should be in a good spot. So I'll go ahead and exit out now that everything is set to contribute GI and it has light probes on. We can go over into lighting and now I'm going to go ahead and generate lighting based on what we have here. All right, one thing that I did do was come back up here and just hit the plus button because somehow the scenarios had disappeared. So uh, in doing that and then hitting generate lighting down in the bottom uh, right here, we were able to make that work. So we now have our night lighting generated. And then I wanna come in here and I wanna do a daytime lighting. So night is the one that's done, day is not done. And I'm curious if I can just come into the environment and turn off the skybox and turn the sun up a good amount inside of root lighting. And going to the directional light inspector, pull this to a bit of a warmer, warmer tone, and pull the intensity up. So I'm going to come over here with this directional light. Uh, perhaps I'll even move it so that it's facing the opposite way, so the sun will be coming up from the other side, um, or rather, the sun is maybe setting. Who knows? And we'll come over to lighting, into adaptive probe volumes. Uh, and all that looks pretty good. And I wanna have day selected and I wanna generate lighting with day. I do wanna show that when you hit display probes, you can see that the probes have been generated. So all of that is positive. So I'll go ahead and hit generate lighting after I turn off display probes and turn off the gizmos so we can see what it does. All right, and this looks like it has now baked. Uh, so the cool thing is to see that immediately, I can just toggle between night and day. 
but here's the real power, right? So I now have multiple scenarios. And, and granted, we could have many more than this. This is just a pure night and day. I can now come over into my rendering debugger where we can turn on and off the display probes as an example. And if you scroll down here, there's this awesome feature to preview scenario blending. So if we go to scenario blend target and say, hey, we're in day right now, but we wanna blend with this scenario and then showcase what that will look like, we can then use the scroll to scroll between those two scenarios. Oh, that's nice. So you can see how powerful this becomes very quickly. And if you're wanting to get into um, into like doing that with scripting during runtime, uh, it's absolutely something that you can get into and do relatively quickly. Let me pull over this, uh, this site. So again, this is in the documentation. And if you go into baking different lighting setups down here in blend between lighting scenarios, it's got a sample script to go ahead and implement runtime transitioning between your lighting scenarios. So at least for this tutorial, I will call it good here. Uh, I think this is really a great success and a fantastic new tool that I'm really a big fan of. So please let me know what other features y'all would like to see. You can see actually on the probe volume and on the probes themselves how the light data is changing. Too cool. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.